It's been four years since the last Yeast entry landed on Western shores. So does that make Yeast 10 Nordics four times better than the ninth? Well, not quite. It's definitely a lot more sunny, that's for sure. But is it worth sailing through this over 20 hour action RPG? We're about to find out. Now, first off, this wouldn't be a Yeez game if our red-haired, almost silent protagonist, Adol, didn't start off strolling around being all social. However, the developers dragged out the opening sections for too long here, with character dialogue and exposition that I could not care less about if I tried. I wasn't the biggest fan of Yeez 9's story as well, though at least it started off with a bang. In Yeast 10's case, it takes far too much time to get to the point, and there's just a ton of fluffy fantasy nonsense that doesn't pay off in the end. It's a shame that the big bads often feel like Saturday morning cartoon villains that can't be taken seriously either. Talk about setting a tone. They'll even blurt out statements like, Guess I can't tell you what's happening, because that would be too early on in the script now, wouldn't it? <sighs> I get that they're trying to be silly, yet they say stuff like this three or four times throughout, and it gets progressively dumber each time. Also, I did notice a couple of character reactions or revelations that didn't exactly make sense, or just appeared out of nowhere with no real build-up. Albeit, they weren't out of this world ridiculous, to be fair. Our two main and only playable leads, Adol and Kaja, work well as a duo though, with clever bits of banter that help refresh the otherwise shoddy plot. But why are these two the sole controllable characters? Well, it's because they became magically chained together in Chapter 1. A pretty contrived way to do it, but hey, I've seen much worse. Long story short, Adol, Kaja, and only a select few can wield mana, the one thing that could defeat the emerging threat known as the Grieger. So it's up to them to restore the peace. Leading into battle, this is where the biggest change to the formula's at. By holding down the shield button, Adol and Kaja can swing their sword and axe together for almost double the damage, while also giving them four unique team-based attacks on top of their four regular skills. It's pretty hype at first, seeing these two in tandem hacking and slashing foes to pieces, However, as I'm sure you can tell, it's pretty busted. Because as soon as an attack finishes, Adol and Kaja will automatically block any normal or red-colored power attacks whichever direction they come from, even in the air. And on top of that, any blocked attack contributes to the revenge gauge, which strengthens the duo's next team skill. So why would you want to fight individually if there's no real downside or reason to other than messing around? I don't know. <laughs> I guess it lets Adol and Kaja whip out their individual skills, but still, even if there are sections when they're alone, it is sub-optimal to stay apart generally. While I have been bashing this game a lot so far, the combat can still be a pleasure to play. Get in a few perfect blocks or evade past blue-colored speed attacks, followed by a counter-strike and some quality combos of your own, and there's an intense sense of flow here that can be rather addictive. Although, how long that stays alluring could vary. Considering there are only two party members and no damage types like slash, piercing, or strike, this formula will start to wane on you at some point. The feeling of fighting is a bit more floaty this time around too, especially when you grapple over to enemies or jump up to attack. Think of the transition from Kingdom Hearts 2 to 3 and you'll know exactly what I mean, for better or worse. Yeez 10 does have a good serving of tense boss fights, even if some are repeated far too often. But the overall enemy variety is actually pretty fair. On the contrary, normal foes love throwing themselves off the edge for some reason. And speaking of bugs, instead of fighting, either Adol or Kaja would casually run into the wall like a glitched out NPC. Oh, and uh, I almost forgot that they would randomly jump up and down at points. Must have energy to burn, I suppose? <laughs> On that note, the graphics are markedly better than Yeez 9, with the cutscene visuals almost looking as good as Nintendo's first party titles. Albeit, whenever something significant happens out on the water, or it gets especially flashy, the frame rate will dip hard on the Nintendo Switch. Big oofed. The normal moment-to-moment -moment gameplay runs well enough at around 30 FPS, 
Though, whenever Adol is involved in a frantic escape or hoverboard sequence, it can get quite choppy. Doesn't help that said sequences are few and far between and don't have that much complexity to them either. Just move a touch to the side and avoid the blatantly obvious obstacles coming your way. Even if these events look fancy fancy, you can practically beat them in your sleep. They're not difficult at all. The devs missed a great opportunity to make the hoverboard itself much more exciting too. Because its use is relatively limited, only letting you jump off ramps to find treasure, grind basic light rails, or glide over terrain that would slow you down on foot. As far as exploration goes, this is where the game shines brightest. Diving into one of the many tropical locales and tackling some side quests can be surprisingly fun, especially since they dish out handy rewards and neat little lore nuggets upon completion. The level designs are interesting enough, and these are the parts where I really tuned into the OST as well. Even if it isn't the most memorable Yee soundtrack of all time, each piece of music slots in nicely and doesn't ever feel out of place. Besides the very opening scene, the audio design and voice acting are also fairly solid. I just wish Adol would physically speak his lines more. I mean, he's got the same voice actor as Eren Jaeger from Attack on Titan, so why not make the most of it? I'd rather that than Adol nodding hi every 20 minutes, that's for sure. Anyway, let's move on to more pressing matters, aka boats. Do they go fast? Yes, but not at the start. It takes a good while or so before Adol's able to extensively upgrade his ship, though the general gameplay of moving between islands and shooting down hostile ships is not bad. Before the windy speed lines start appearing, Adol's access to speed and firepower is severely limited. Yet when it does finally get going, the naval combat is decent enough to muck around with. Some of the cannon volleys don't always fire exactly where you want, and the turning controls will sometimes lock up if the camera is in a weird spot, but you'll eventually get used to the steering. Since this game has dotted lines to signal loading zones, ships will just hard stop whenever they bump into them during certain encounters. So even though it looks chanky as, you can hardcore cheese several sea battles using this method. There are also times when you can trade with nearby merchant ships for goodies, or physically board enemy vessels and take down the crew in waves, which are neat little touches to keep the open seas engaging. As a whole though, Yee's 10 Nordics has missed the mark. The combat starts off fresh and exciting with its new duo mode mechanics, but it becomes stale over time as this game lacks any damage type features or party members to keep players invested. While it can be enjoyable when things start to click, you first have to trudge through Yeast 10's story, which is dragged out with excessive exposition and boring fantasy fluff that doesn't exactly bring home the bacon. Despite these flaws, Yeast 10 does have its highlights, particularly in exploration, where its tropical themed levels and valuable side quests shine. The graphics are notably improved over Yeast 9 too, especially in cutscenes. However, the frame rate can drop dramatically during visually intense scenes on the Switch. The simple ship mechanics and naval combat are welcome additions, but a few controller quirks and glitches can disrupt the experience on both land and sea. Ultimately, while Yeast 10 has its moments, they don't quite live up to the standards set by its predecessors, with a plot and gameplay that will most likely struggle to hold your attention.